What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are you doing tonight? Welcome to Faith Unaltered. I'm flying solo tonight. David's hit a bad spot. He's got some bad reception going on right now, and he's got a little game plan at nine o'clock. And so we're pre-recording this episode. And so, like I said, I'm flying solo. So this is, this should be an interesting interesting conversation i have with me jesse bloomer we've been discussing universalism eternal conscious torment and conditional immortality on facebook and i invited jesse on to discuss i love having conversations like this face to face right it's so much easier i think than setting that typing you know responding to multiple people and i just want a good one-on-one -on -one conversation with jesse i think some of his views are interesting disagree with some of them but we're here to hash those things out tonight. So, Jesse, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, my friend, uh, the floor is yours. Yep. Hey, mate. How you going? Um, yeah. I don't know how to introduce myself. I'm, I'm just a, a Christian, I guess, like probably most of, our, most of our listeners. I'm a universal salvationist. I believe in the salvation of all people. Um, and that's about as far as far as it goes. I, I believe that because of the Bible, you know, that's what the Bible says. That's the original gospel. That that was the original church. That was what the original apostles believed. And um, when you read the Bible, it's all through the Bible. I can I can take you guys through some some verses that seem to um, allude to the, uh, the fact that everybody's got like most people are going to be destroyed or tormented for all of eternity. These scriptures are just mistranslated, misunderstood. I mean, we're not living in the first century. The Bible wasn't written in English. It was written in ancient Greek. And we, we don't mean some of these uh, sayings and that. You have to understand the context of the time. I was just thinking about um, uh, just before about one scripture that says the smoke of their torment will rise up for, forever and ever. Now, the thing about smoke is, is it's temporary. And this verse is actually saying that what's going to happen to these people is going to be temporary. And that's why it's worded with the word smoke, because smoke appears for a time and then disappears. And Solomon mentioned this in Ecclesiastes when he said everything is meaningless. He didn't actually say anything is meaningless. He said everything is ha Havel. Havel means smoke, temporary. Everything is temporary. And it's the same concept used in that smoke of the torment verse, it's saying that what's going to happen, their discipline, their punishment, if you want to call it that, is going to be temporary. Now, there's a few other verses that talk about forever and ever. If you read these verses properly, Ionia, Ionia means to the age of the ages or in modern English for a period of time so that people aren't going to be tormented forever and ever. They're going to be tormented for a period of time, which is going to be ending and it's in the end is going to be redemptive. We can see this all throughout the scriptures. Um, I don't I don't know where to start. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I sent you guys a few scriptures. I'm sorry if I'm I'm talking too much. I'm just gonna lay a few things nah. down, and if you could, uh, get you, yep, I'll get you to respond to them. So I sent sure. you guys a few um, scriptures when we were talking the other day. I mean, we've got t uh, one Timothy two three. This is a good and accept. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. We see the word all who gave himself for a ransom of all who will have all men to be saved. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to comment on that? Do you want to talk, talk about that? I, I, I I, I can yeah. give you a few more scriptures. I've got scriptures for days. So, well, um, there, yeah, let me, yeah, let me jump in real quick. So we talked, or you brought up revelation 14, 11, the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. And then you brought up first Timothy. So do you want to go back to revelation and let me comment on that? Or do you just want to stick with first Timothy for right now? Yeah. Uh, first Timothy and we'll come back to revelation. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. get, I'll get your opinion on it. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So I would like to start then, and uh, I, I won't read it all, but I, I think we do need to get a context here. So let me start in 1 Timothy 2, 1. 
to really grasp what's going on here. So first of all, then Paul writes, I urge the request, prayers, intercessions, and thanks be offered on behalf of all people, even for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And then that's where it picks up where Jesse started quoting such prayer for all is good and welcome before God our Savior, since he wants all people to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. And so I guess my first question, Jesse, is that do you take, since God desires all people to be saved and Paul seems to be repeating that phrase, do you think Paul also wants us to pray for every single person without exception as well? Yeah, of course. Of course he desires all people to be saved and he's, and he's God. He gets his des desires. Nobody can stop the Lord. Nothing can stop the Lord. Nothing can get in the way. Um, nothing can uh, get in, in the way of our relationship with God, not our own decisions, not our own beliefs, not the devil. Nothing in heaven on earth can separate us from the love of God. And that's a message to all people. I mean, I, I just don't understand how, how you can say it's only for some. Or he wants everyone to be saved, but because of everyone's decisions or their beliefs, they just don't want to be saved. I mean, that's just, there's no logic in that. Who doesn't? Well, I mean, Romans 1 says people hate forever. God, you know, like what, it, what I'm, I'm just curious what you do with Romans 1 that talks okay, so about that people. Word hate, it, that word hate is a mistranslation. It says people love God less in reference to the world. Yes, they love money. They love the world more than God, who is love, the spirit of love. Some people don't have love. That's true. I mean, that, that, that's just a fact. But God has love for them. They might not have, have love for God because they don't really understand God or they've been hurt by the world or trauma. Some, something has, has gone wrong in their lives in terms of love. You know, they might have got rejected as children. Something happened, you know, and, and it perverted. You know, if you don't get brought up well, it, it makes it hard in life to, to have love. Although, you know, some, some people manage to, to get through it and they, and they learn. But really, it's um, we're, we're, we're all children of God. I mean, there's no, there's no other way around it. And, and, and God is all-knowing. He's not going to create people that he's going to lose. He's got a bigger plan than that. I mean, we can see that all throughout the scriptures. Um, I, I, I know like, I, I could give a verse. You could give a verse. We can go back and, back and forward all day. I mean, and we've only got yeah. an hour. I mean, this is the lifetime of learning for you and for me. I mean, we're not really going to be able to lay it all out on the line. Because everyone's got to do their own research, their own. They've got to connect to God. They've got to make their own decisions. Because I say one verse, you say one verse, and and everyone chooses what they want to believe out of that verse. Do you go with the God wants all to be saved verse, or do you go with uh, m most people are taking the wide road to destruction? It's really a personal choice uh, of which way which way you go. And I understand where you guys are at because I've been a Christian all my life. I didn't. I didn't. I was thinking, to be honest, I never believed in eternal torment because God changes his mind several times in the scriptures. Even when I was like believing, I was an annihilationist. I thought God might um, destroy a few people. But mm -hmm. I was like, well, God changes his mind. You know, he wants to destroy a city. He wants to, um, you know, uh, remove a king and he changes his mind. So I was like, it doesn't matter what God says. He's just going to change his mind in the end. I know that he's love. Like, God's cool. Like, nobody's as, as, as chill as God. I mean, you're God. You know, you're the Alpha and the Omega. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Nothing's going to stress you out. He's not like us, like, get an ego and we just, oh, we're going to just, if you don't believe me, I'm going to kill you. You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. torture you if you don't believe what I say. You know what I mean? This, All of this eternal torment stuff, that's, man's thinking it's not god's thinking he, he's uh, he's higher than that uh, and we can we can see that all throughout the scriptures but i don't know that's what interesting that? so well i want to comment on going back to whenever i mentioned haters of god and you said that that's a mistranslation and yeah. that should actually be rendered loved less the greek there yeah. is theostuges and what yep. that and i've got the pocket lexicon to the greek new testament and it is literally translated hating the god so i'm curious where you get loved less from theostuges well, i mean hate is hate is an english word i mean i know that it might be theostuges is a greek word though 
Yeah, I know. I know it's a great word, all right, but it's been translated to English. They they've used hate. Somebody has just reading the Greek. Somebody has gone. Let's use hate, and it's in the one translation. I bet you, if you did a word study on that word, you'll find it's to do with God. God's mentioned in it, right? I bet you, it's to do with not loving God, not hating, not hating like like it's just not loving because um, God loved Jacob and hated Esau. He didn't hate SU. He loved him less. If you look at the Hebrew word for that, it's the same concept. Um, that's why if, if, if you're just all, all about the scriptures, you're never really going to be able to understand the Bible because it's just a translation. We, we're not in, in a, we don't speak ancient Greek. We don't read the language. We don't understand the times. We don't understand the sayings, the little nuances. Like, it, it, it's basically like, imagine. But if don't we have to do that? Read, don't. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Of course, but don't of we? Course we do. Yes, yes, of course we do. But you've got to use your own thinking to understand right. the scriptures. You can't just you can't just trust someone else's translation. You've got okay, to so compare I'm... every scripture to every other scripture and see if it lines up with the character of God. Don't just take it at face value. If it if it says hate, that doesn't automatically mean that it it it, it means what we would 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 assume hate would, would mean because. These translations, I'm telling you, man, it they're they're bad, bro. They're they're they're, they're, so, they're bad. Even the Greek can be really bad. Right, right. So I'm not reading out of a translation. I'm reading out of the SBL Greek New it's Testament. It can be bad, man. I mean, I mean, like I said, I'm not reading you know, out of an English translation. I'm I'm reading out of the Greek New Testament, and yeah, from what I but understand, you're reading, I know you're reading out of the Greek New Testament, but it's still translated to English. You know what I mean? It's no, still, I don't okay, because gonna... here, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. What? I knocked myself out with my headphones. So there's no yeah, English I know. in here. I, know. I, I don't. It's, so I don't understand crazy. where you understand. keep getting English from. Because how how are you going to like? I know you. I know that you're reading the Greek, but there's still you're still translating it into English. Like when right. you say hate, that's an English. That's not a Greek word. Okay. So right, right. Okay. I I see what you're saying. My apologies. So then. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this then. So the Greek word theostoges, why would you translate yeah. that no any what, different? What, guys, guys. I, I was just going to ask. Know how to read. You don't know how to read? What? You, you cut out. I don't know how to read Greek. Oh, okay. Like I look at the. Yeah, I don't understand how to read Greek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then, so you say I, the word, you say the word theostigais, like mm -hmm. everyone does word studies unless you've studied Greek and you understand how to read it, which I don't know. I don't think many people do. Most people just look at Greek and then they make their own decisions and they look at what the word might mean and then they decide in their own minds, like we all do, what it means. Just like we all decide what scriptures mean, and you know, like. If you're a great scholar, that, that's great. Maybe you maybe you'd be able to illuminate, you know, most most Christians because no, most Christians don't, I, don't know how to read. Greek. Sure, no, I definitely wouldn't consider myself a Greek scholar by any stretch of the imagination. But I would encourage people to dive into the original languages that the Bible was written. Like you made a beautiful point a while ago that the Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And I think we need to be familiar with those languages if we really want to understand what God has said. We both believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, right? And so I think it's yeah. important to understand these idioms, understand this Greek language, which is why I've got BDAG here. One of the, I mean, maybe yeah. arguably one of the world's best Greek lexicons. And I'm trying to find this word, uh, theostigates, just to see how they render it. And why, if it's any yeah. different than hate, or, or or if it's the same as hate, why you would disagree with that? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't mean hate. He's done up with the character of God. He is love. You know, you know what I mean? No, but people aren't love, right? People do hate God. I've ran into people. Yeah. I, I well, let me not. not like, let me let me use myself as an example. But, uh, I used to hate God. I didn't want anything to do with God. And anytime somebody brought God up, I would automatically shut them down. Right. But at some time in my life, God changed my heart. And so I know I've hated God. Okay. 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 You know but, I mean? like, okay. Like, say, say, okay, bro. Say, say I hated you. Would you, would you torture me for eternity or kill me? Do you know what I mean? Your ego is not that big, is it? If I, no, no, like, no, no, if no. I hated you, would you kill me or torture me for eternity? I think we've gotten off that's, on the that's wrong kind point. Of what if, you hate God, if you hate God, you're going to get tortured for eternity or you, he's going to destroy you. That's just not true. Okay. So I'm curious. Like, I'm really, really curious like then. God, it doesn't look like mercy. His mercies are renewed every day. It's endless mm-hmm. mercy, endless grace, endless forgiveness, endless love. Okay. So there's no you, let me ask you this. You, no. While I'm looking for this verse, you keep mentioning that God is love, God is love, God is love, which I agree with. But let me ask you this. Do you believe yeah. that God is also a God of wrath? <laughs> no. He's a, he's a God of corrective no. discipline. Wrath is a mistranslation. Corrective discipline. He knows how to correct. He's a good father. He knows so how to direct God, us in the right direction. So God corrected Jesus on the cross, or God poured out his wrath on Jesus on the cross? Because I think, and, right. and, and hear me out, so I believe you see both whenever it comes to the cross. Well, God I believe that you see God's wrath and God's mercy when you look at Jesus. Right, his hatred no, for sin. No, I mean, it cost the Son of God his life. Okay, this is what he did. He poured out his correction. He corrected. I'm telling you, this word wrath means correction. He because he corrected the world. He corrected everything. He made everything whole. He renewed everything. He um he yeah he he redeemed everything. It is nothing to do with wrath. Like like he's angry at and he needs to kill his son to appease his own anger and now. Oh, now he's okay. Now that I'm, now that I let my son get crucified, now I'm okay. Before, I was just, oh. I was so angry with the world that I was going to destroy everyone. But now that my son died, now I'm not so. No, he's saying everything was redeemed. Wrath is a terrible translation of that word. That is just like, who comes up with this stuff? Honestly, like it is deliberate mistranslations, is what it is. They're deliberately you know- mistranslating the Bible. I don't, I don't mean any offense whenever I say this, but whenever I hear, keep hearing you say it, it's a mistranslation, it's a mistranslation, and then I find the word that I'm finally looking for, theosugase and bdag, one of the best Greek lexicons in the world. And it says right here, Romans 1.30, meaning hating God. You, I, my, I guess I go back to the question yeah, of, okay. these are scholars, agree, these exactly. are the people who know the Greek, so why would you, not knowing Greek, disagree with them? I, do you honestly? Why would I? Tr- why would honestly, man? Why would I trust somebody who's translating the Bible when funded by religious people? It's literally funded by the religion. They 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 have to toe the line, just like in politics. Just like in, whoever's got the money, that's who they translate for. Religion makes its money off of fear. They're the ones that want to that because they've got the money to fund it. It's all to do with money, man. If you can't read with the spirit why would i listen to some translator when i've heard the audible voice of god myself why would i do that when i have a connection to god myself what why would i why would i trust some translator i have no idea who they are i don't know but i know i know god i think i would i'll trust god who lives inside of me over some guy who's getting to translate a bible for a church that makes all their money off fear and control that's just let me ask you a question can i ask you a question do you believe that um do you believe Mormons have have everything right? The Mormons? Mm-hmm. Because I have a Mormon friend that would say that God spoke to him as well and everything, and he felt his burning in his bosom whenever he read the Book of Mormon and all of these different things. 
my question is I know, how do we look, separate I, I the claims that people have spoken to God or or, or have heard God or whatever? You because can't. multiple people say that and they all contradict each other, it seems. You can't. So I'm I'm just saying from my perspective. I I don't care sure. if anyone believes whether I've heard the voice of God or not. It's not about that. I'm just saying mm -hmm. to you, from mm -hmm. my perspective, I don't trust anything anyone else does. I trust myself. Okay. I trust my understanding. I trust my own connection. I'm not worried about religion. I group think doesn't work for me. Group think mm -hmm. doesn't work. I don't go to I, I don't listen to religions, groups, nothing. I'm completely individual in my own ideas. I I I, I don't learn. I don't let myself be influenced by groupthink, by Bible translations, by nothing, bro. It's just God. Honestly, okay. would you believe in eternal torment if you'd never read the Bible? I'm a conditional immortalist, so mind? I don't believe in eternal torment to if begin with. Around, yeah, but if you were just walking around Earth and you'd never read this mistranslated Bible, would you would yeah. you start thinking, I think God's going to torture everyone forever? You would never think that, bro. You would never come to that conclusion. That's religious thinking. That's the thought mindset that killed jesus right yeah i don't like Do like i said going well like i said before i don't believe in eternal conscious torment so i would hold to what jesus said in matthew 10 28 whenever he says do okay, not I'll be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul instead fear the one who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell and so to me I don't, I, I would agree with people like Chris Date um, that would say, no, we, immortality is conditional, right? And to be immortal, yeah. part, or, or, I'm sorry, part of immortality, part of salvation is receiving that immortality whenever God gives those whose faith is in Christ immortal, right? That That's our hope is that we will be raised on the last day immortal, right? And so why would, here's my question, why would Jesus say to fear yep. God who is able to, to destroy both body and soul in hell if, if that's really an empty threat? Does that seem like an empty threat to you? If God's going to save everybody, why would Jesus say this? He's just saying he has the power over life and death. It, 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 it's not a threat. You're taking it the wrong way. It's not a threat, man. He's just saying... So, you know, okay. I have the power over life and death. Yes, he can destroy people's soul in... Of course he can. He's God. He can do anything. But it's not a threat, man. It's it, it's not a threat. I Look, and anyway, it's not a free gift. That's not a free gift if you have to accept something. So, so guys, anyone watching this, I would encourage you to just type in uh, free gift and look up every scripture on f the free gift. Because if you have to do it, let... Let not any man boast that, that that salvation is because of his own works. It's a free gift. And a free gift isn't a free gift if, if, if you have to do something to to receive it. Then it's a gift that you've worked for. You've earned the gift. Right, that would be salvation so, by works. But we believe that salvation is by grace through faith in Christ, right? And, and look, I've been who are. All right, you don't believe in eternal conscious torment. That's something. That's that's where I got to as well. I got to annihilationism before the, the Lord really showed me the scriptures. So, I mean, that's something at least. You know, you, you're not on this eternal torment, hell-bent mission like, like most people. But um, that's something, bro. So I guess, I guess there's a reason why we're having this conversation because I don't usually talk well, yeah. to people who believe in eternal conscious torment. Sure. You know, I'll message sure, no. them back, but there's no talking to them. They're out of their minds. <laughs> I mean, I've got some good friends that are, hold to that, but and we've did some episodes. I encourage anybody yeah. to go listen to the debate that we did with Chris Date and Robert Wiesner. Those are really, really a fun thing. But but we are kind of getting off track a little bit. So I we were yeah, talking to cool. and I I brought to you a or I sent you a video that we did last night with Ethan. I was kind of happy with that, um, how that conversation went. And I wanted to get your thoughts on faith, right? So let me ask you this, yep. Jesse. Does does the gospel, yep. the true, you was talking about the true gospel a while ago. And, and man, let me just tell you, like, I am on a mission. Yep. My mission is to know truth, right? That's 
That's where I want to be. That's where I want my listeners to be is searching for truth. And so my question is, does the gospel, the true gospel that you were talking about a while ago, require a person to yep. trust Jesus in order to be saved? Yeah, well, well God is love, isn't he? God is love. Mm -hmm. So accepting Jesus, which that's just a name. I mean, God is my salvation. That's Jesus's name. To accept the name of Jesus, you're accepting that the spirit of love, which is God, is salvation. And to have salvation inside of your... Oh, shit. Okay, you're back. Um, to have salvation inside oh, yeah. of your mind and soul you you've mm -hmm. got to have jesus that's true but that doesn't mean if you don't have him that you're going to get destroyed but it does mean if you want to have that salvation living inside of you you'll accept love into your life and because you can accept jesus and not know anything about love there's plenty of christians mm -hmm. who believe in jesus who don't know the first thing about love but once you accept love who is jesus inside of your your soul that's when that's when that's when you receive salvation. And some people understand the gospel consciously, and some people don't. They just understand love. That's the true gospel. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you would agree with our guest that we had last night that whenever someone comes to faith in Christ, whenever someone has that piss as God gives, I don't know whether you, you stand on the Calvinist Arminian side, but whether whenever one comes to faith in Christ. That's more of a result, or, or I'm sorry, that's more of a fruit of their salvation. Would you agree with that? Or is it more <laughs> like what? Yeah, like, let me rephrase Christ, that. Would you let me rephrase that real quick? Would you agree that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, was, I was just going to ask. In a Christ, Christ is an idea, Jesus is an idea. He's, it's not about religion. It, you can learn a lot of things through the Bible, but you've got Christ lives in us. He's in here. He's in our hearts. It's not about this conscious religious Everyone's, thing. There's, there's, people, there's people that understand the gospel that don't know anything about the religious gospel. They, they know love inside of their own heart through their own children, through their family members, through the members of society, through the life that you live. Everyone is a spiritual being. Everything that we do is spiritual. Everything's, everything requires faith. Every day when you get up and you get on a train or drive your car to work, everything requires faith. Everyone deals with these principles on a daily basis. Um, there's no escaping, um, escaping it. So to say that some people are spiritual and some people aren't is just not true. We're all spiritual beings. We all operate through faith. Um, everything we do operates through faith. So... You know, I mean, we're all in this together. That's that's the whole thing about universal salvation. We are all children of God. We're all in this together. God loves us all. We're all inheritors of the kingdom, and nothing's going to get in the way of that. And, and and that's the scripture, as well. You said something a while ago. Do you believe that Jesus? Um, you said that Jesus was in everyone. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah, okay. but Satan's in everyone as well. I mean, he, he called Peter Satan. He, you know, he he's so, the only one that. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he called Peter Satan. You know what I mean? So is 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 Peter really Satan, or is he just playing? No, a role but Peter was going against that. the will of God at that point. He didn't want Jesus to die, right? What would have happened if Jesus was never crucified? <laughs> We'd be done. Not right? not that though, but Peter was trying to put people under the law. Even after Jesus died, Peter didn't get it. Paul, um, Peter had yeah. to get rebuked by Paul because he's trying to make him live under the law. Pe man, sure. how many mistakes did Peter make? Like, it, it was, he was out of control. Well, denying you know, Jesus to his face, that was, was pretty brutal. <laughs> But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so, exactly. so I want to real quick. I want to go back to this concept of Jesus living in everyone, right? Because here's the thing: in yeah. John 14, Jesus says, "If anyone loves me, he will obey my word." and my father will love him and we will come to him and take up residence with him right the person who does not love yeah. me does not obey my words and the word you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me i've spoken these things while i was with you but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you everything yeah. will cause you to remember everything and if we go back up to verses like 15 so for example if you love me you will obey my commandments then i will ask the father and he will give you an another advocate to be with you forever the spirit of truth 
whom the world cannot accept because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he resides with you and will be in you. And he goes on to say that, you know, the spirit doesn't indwell the world. And it seems to me like in John 14, there's a categorical difference being portrayed here by Jesus. He's saying that there's a difference between someone who loves him, actually loves him, who's been born again, and someone who's not. And it, for me anyway, it seems like verse 23 is implying that Jesus isn't in everyone and only those who receive him, like John 1 12 says, are children of God. And there's this special relationship there between him that's not with the world. How do you respond? Yeah, Jesus is all in all. Just wait, I'll try and find the scripture. Well, what does is, what is John 14 23 mean? Because I don't want to just keep bouncing back because, like you said, we quote scriptures all night. I want to engage these scriptures. I want to. I want to hear your exegesis, your 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 syntax. Like I want to know why you yep. believe this isn't talking, or or this is seems to be and saying me, exactly the exact of what I think it says. Sorry, brother. Just give me the direct uh, scripture again. John fourteen twenty three. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you re can you repeat it? I mean, uh, it, it, oh I oh, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. I thought you meant just repeat the the Flip verse. Okay, yeah. Jesus yeah. replied, "If anyone loves me, he will obey my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and take up residence with him." This seems to me like he's saying that until this happens, yeah. we're not there, right? Me and the Father aren't there. But once someone obeys my word. I, aka trust him that's when jesus yeah. the father the holy spirit comes in and dwells us and we are in a different relationship with jesus than what we were before of course of course bro like we've we've got enemies down here you know not ever not everyone is with with god god's in them even even if he hasn't been resurrected in the inner man yet god's still there nothing can survive without the spirit of god um yeah, of course, man. Awesome. If you haven't, if you haven't found salvation within yourself, you haven't found Christ within. Of course, man, he doesn't have residence in residence in you, because he's not, he's not living with you. But he's still in his spirit is in everything. His spirit's still in everything, and the the, the Lord controls everything, bro. If you look at the Book of Job, um, yeah. Satan can't do anything with it, uh, the Lord approving it. You know what I mean? So everything that happens with our enemies, you know, love your enemies. I mean, uh, I'm getting off track, but everything that happens, just because Christ isn't risen up in someone, doesn't that doesn't matter. He'll be able to figure that out at the judgment when he reveals the truth to them, reveals love to them, shows them forgiveness. The, the, he, he who's forgiven more loves more. So in the end, he'll be able to wrap it all around. Yeah, everyone's not cruising, cruising around preaching the gospel of universal salvation. Like, like Paul, you know what I mean? Christ isn't absolutely just flowing out of everyone like, 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 like he was Paul. Um, so, yeah, he's just saying like, it's, I mean, it's a true statement. It's, I would agree with it. But that doesn't mean people are going to be lost. Christ is never going, they're never going to be redeemed. It doesn't mean Christ doesn't love them. It's nothing like that. It's just, I mean, these scriptures have got to be read from a, a a god uh, a really high perspective not just read it it's literal oh do i have to climb into my mother's womb to be born again like this literal version of the gospel is just insane i mean jesus spoke about it in his day as well but i mean okay. everyone you could you could read that scripture a million different ways okay so is that somebody, somebody yeah somebody's trying to call me sorry about that um okay. interesting uh, interesting so okay so i want to get yeah you're okay so i want to get uh <laughs> i want to okay let me ask you this so when do you believe that there's like post-mortem salvation like we were talking with ethan last night he believes that people yeah, can be I saved after they die Yes, of okay. course I do, because Jesus preached okay. the gospel to the imprisoned spirits after he died on the cross in First Peter. 
Yeah, he, so when... he descended to the underworld. To... Mm-hmm. Do you know that scripture? It's the most overlooked scripture in the Bible. When Jesus dies on the cross in, in First Peter, he descends into the underworld and he preaches to the gospel to the to those lost to the disobedient spirits who were lost in the flood of Noah. So Jesus literally preaches the gospel to dead people in First Peter, and, and everyone overlooks that scripture. And it's clear as day. I mean, you can pull it up if you want. No, no. Up. Well, I'm glad I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm curious when yeah. when do you think that that happens? Because so the way I've got this kind of envisioned is whenever I die, well, as a believer, I would go and be with the Lord. Do we agree with that? Yeah, well, yes. Yes, if you die okay. and and you don't have anything else left to learn, yeah, you'll go straight you'll go straight to be with God. Yeah. What do you mean by that? But if you've got things left to learn, you 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 might become a spirit. You might have to walk around as a spirit. You might be imprisoned in some kind of spiritual prison in another dimension. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that could happen. God God will correct everyone in his own way. I mean, that's a mystery, but that first Peter scripture kind of gives us a clue as to what happens to evil people when they die. They go into prison. You can call it purgatory or whatever, and, and the Lord still preaches to you there. And that's where you come to the knowledge of the truth and the understanding of love and who you are and who God created you to be. And ultimately you're saved, just like the gospel says. So is that what the eternal fire in Matthew 25, 41 is Uh, from your view? Is that like spiritual prison? Yeah, Yeah, that's exactly right. it's It's a place of cleansing and fire in ancient culture, in Greek times, they used to use it to purify um, precious metals. God is hmm. God is describes himself oh, as a consuming that. flame. God, so God's not He's not consuming destruction. He's con- consuming refinement. That's what this whole life about. That's what your life's life is about. That's what my, my life's about. That's what everyone's life is about. We're all being refined. It's a process. That's what God does. He's a consuming flame. He's a purifying flame. He's the it, it's the um, okay. crucible. I see yeah. what you. I think I see what you're saying. So, so you would say then, since yeah. this eternal fire is cleansing, it's purifying. This is what's going to happen to Satan and his angels, because that's what that passage says. This eternal fire has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So, do you believe that they will be yes. saved in the end as well? Yes, I do. Of course. Interesting. Of course. That I I see, and that's I guess. That's what I don't understand. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? I mean, how awesome would that be? If when God forgives how? Satan and our greatest, our greatest enemy, the person we fought against our whole lives, God forgives him. That's love. How man. can Satan have for? How can God forgive Satan if there's not an atonement made for Satan? How can he not? He he died. He reconciled all things in heaven and on earth. He reconciled everything. All things means all. He reconciled the kingdom of darkness. We Peter, he called Peter Satan. He was he was redeemed. You know what I mean? Like, man, but Satan's getting redeemed for sure. That's the gospel, bro. We've all played the role of Satan. If Satan's not getting redeemed, we're not getting redeemed. You know what I mean? We, we we ate from the tree. We, we all listened to Satan. We all went, we all followed him. If if he's not, if he's not getting redeemed, we're not getting redeemed either. It's one in all in, man. How do you view the atonement then? Because Hebrews specifically says that Jesus took on flesh in order to atone for humans. He didn't do that with angels for his cares for the seed of Abraham, right? And so I'm just trying to figure out, does God just forgive, like, does he sweep sin under the rug? Or does there have to be atonement made like we see all throughout the Old Testament? We see it with the the Yom Kippur. You know who's really going to forgive Satan and the angels? You and me. Because we're going to be judging angels. You know the Bible? You know when Paul talks about, do you not know that you'll judge angels? We're going to be the ones that are judging, bro. Not God. You and me. We're going to decide what happens to them. And we're going to understand what it's like to fail God. And we're going to forgive them, bro. And they're going to serve us for all of eternity. That They're going to be the footstools. Um, Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they will be kings in heaven. But they'll be there. Yeah. Satan and the angels, they'll be there, bro, because we're going to forgive them, you and me and all the other believers. That's because we're going to be like God. That's how we're going to become like God. 
I guess I'm just not understanding how forgiveness works in your worldview, because from what I see in scripture, it's not from religious view. It's not from a religious view. I don't know what I'm saying. No, no, no. I, so it's a heart. Okay. It's a heart understanding. All right. Let and me. And it's scriptural let me as just, well. And I. I, I, I well, let I, me I, read I scripture, and then maybe not, maybe that'll help. Maybe yeah. that'll help. Okay, so I'm in I'm in Hebrews two, and he says this in Hebrews okay. two eleven, for indeed who makes holy and those being made holy all have the same origin, and so he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers in the midst of the assembly. I will praise you. Again, he says, I will be confident. And again, here I am with the children God has given me. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he likewise shared in their humanity so that through death he could destroy or break the power of reduce to nothing the one who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and set free those who were held in slavery all their lives by their fear of death. For surely his concern is not for angels, but he is concerned for Abraham's descendants. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers and sisters in every respect so that he could become a merciful and faithful high priest in things relating to God to make atonement for the sins of the people. For since he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. So this is beautiful whenever you see that Jesus is our high priest. He's offering, just like in the Old Testament, cool. the high priest offered atonement. He offered intercession. Jesus, it, 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 I can lay my head on my pillow, resting easy, knowing that Jesus, my high priest, is standing before God, interceding on behalf of me, right? But Satan don't have that. Oh. Satan doesn't have a high priest. Satan's Satan doesn't have right. an intercessor. Satan, has, Satan doesn't have atonement according to this text because Jesus was no, a but human, we do. not an angel. We do. And we have authority over the kingdom of darkness. I'm telling you. We're going to forgive Satan, the Christians. We can the atone for Satan. The Lord's chosen. We're going to get the ultimate decision because we have the power over the kingdom of darkness. We have authority over them. We have authority. We decide what goes on. When the centurion said, I have authority over men. So I understand, Jesus, you have authority to say, um, let, this, let my daughter be healed. Just say the word and she will be healed. Authority, authority means you say what happens. It means you have control. We have authority over the kingdom of darkness. Don't you understand that we're going to be the ones that's, that are going to decide what goes on with Satan and his angels? And once the truth is illuminated to us and we become like God, we're going to fix them, man. It, it, it's scriptures to do with us. But I'm telling Will you, at the end of the day... Will atonement be made for Satan? Yeah, we, we've atoned how, Satan, how, how does it? How, how does atonement work then? Do we do we die for Satan or or how does that work exactly? Yeah. Okay. God died for us. We died for the kingdom of darkness to be redeemed. Just like God the Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in us. It goes down the line like that. I'm look, this is a hard thing to understand, man. I'm just telling you what's gonna happen. Like Jesus knew what it was gonna happen. It definitely is a hard thing to understand. I, and, I, and I, know I'm it sorry, is. I'm... I know it is because it's the first time, it's the first time mm -hmm. you've heard anything like this. And I, I, I wish I'd like, I had everything planned out to go through it, but it's not the Lord's will. So I'm just doing this off the top of my head because I've got to use my phone. Um, I don't have everything that I, that I wanted to talk about, but, and it doesn't matter anyway, because we can talk for, we could talk for weeks and we can just go mm -hmm. back and forth, back and forth. This is going to be an understanding that's going to come into people's hearts and I hope it comes into your heart because when you redeem everything in your own mind, including the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness has no power over your life. I can't explain to you how much darkness got released from my life when I came to the understanding of universal salvation for created beings. I used to, like, I, I never thought I'd be able to smoke and weed. I never thought I'd. Um, the problem really i could stop smoking weed man but once i realized everything was redeemed all the stress went off my life i got 100 clean i don't drink i don't smoke weed i don't do anything 100 healthy um and and i just want to encourage people man once you redeem all things in your own mind 
it's going to bring light into your eyes, man. It's going to be bring light into your life. Mm-hmm. That's my experience, anyway. That's. I, but I, I'm okay, sorry, so you've, been, have, you've yeah. given us a lot of scriptures. I just, I just want to give you a couple, brother, and we'll start from sure. the first time universal. Okay, we'll start sure. from the first time universal salvation is mentioned in the Bible, and that's in Genesis. Is it easy for you to look up things? Because yeah. it's hard yeah. for me to look them up. I've got a lot okay. also. So Genesis. Gen- okay, awesome, brother. Uh, Genesis twelve three. All people on earth will be blessed through Abraham. Have you got that scripture? So Genesis twelve. Yeah, now the yeah now the Lord said to Abraham or Abram, sorry, go out from your country, your relatives, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Then I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great so that you will exemplify divine blessing. I will bless those who bless you, but the one who treats you lightly, I must curse, so that all the families of the earth may receive blessing through you. Yep, all the families of the earth, everyone. That's 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 uni- first time universal salvation is mentioned. Okay, so we'll go to Genesis Time out. 12. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, not yet. Uh, Genesis 12, 3, we're still in there. Who's the people that he's cursing then? What's that? Who are the people that God curses in Genesis twelve three? Yep, they're will... the they're the enemies. They're the, enemy, they're, they're the enemies of God. Okay, so how are they cursed exactly? Well, cursed is uh, they just they won't they won't prosper in in their lives. They they won't. Um, they won't be able to gain control over the over the truth. Every everything's spiritual. This is not like a a literal. They they won't have domi- they won't have dominion over the truth. Okay. They won't be able to destroy God's people. God's people will always continue. You know, the enemy is always trying to destroy destroy God's people on earth. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a pretty it's a pretty basic. Okay, so what about all the all the families on earth will be blessed through Abraham? Well, yeah, I would all read that as earth. right. The how you're translating that or how you're interpreting that is all people without exception. I would I, I would understand yep. this verse to mean all people without distinction, right? And so in the same sense, because if they if people are receiving a curse, then God is not blessing them. That is the exact opposite. And so how do we have people being cursed and yet all of the families of the earth are blessed? This has to be one of those categorical distinctions between everyone without exception and everyone without distinction. I do believe all the families of the earth are blessed by God. Like those who bless Abraham, I will bless you, right? But those who curse him, I will curse you. And so... The, again, it kind of okay. just goes back to simple logic. Okay. Okay. If you're getting cursed, you're not getting okay. blessed. Okay, we've heard that. We've heard that scripture because you can't just take one scripture at face value. You've got to compare it to all the That's scriptures. Right. I don't think that Agreed. verse. Is, I don't think the verse is translated that well. But okay, we'll go on to Genesis twenty-two eighteen. All of the nations of earth will be blessed through Abraham's offspring. Genesis twenty-two eighteen. So let me start in 15, then that's the paragraph. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I solemnly swear by my own name, decrees the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will greatly multiply your descendants so that they will be countless as the stars in the sky or the grains of the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the strongholds of their enemies because you have obeyed me, all the nations of the earth will pronounce blessing on one another using the name of your descendants. Okay. Yeah, and that's a great scripture because you know, if you know, there's more like the sands of the seashore. The sands of the seashore. That's an interesting scripture because do you know there's like trillions, trillions of of, of um, grains of sand. On, in, and on the, the stars earth. in the sky. And if you yeah. look at the yeah, stars in the sky, trillions, trillions and trillions. And so, if we look at the the beginning of creation, apparently six thousand years ago, since Adam, there's not 
there's not that many people that have that could have possibly existed. So that scripture, I don't hundred percent even know what it means. But to have that to reference that many people, are are we? Are, is there going to be more people that are going to be created once we get to heaven? Are there other worlds out there that we're going to inherit? Are there other beings? You know, it it that's a crazy scripture. I don't really understand. I love that what? scripture because it's kind of like there's more people than there are. There's not there's not even nearly as many people as there are grains of sand that have ever existed. So what's he talking about? Right, right. No, I I agree 100 percent there. But back here in Genesis yeah. 22. So I'm curious. I'm not seeing universal salvation in here though. So your descendants will take possession of the strongholds of their enemies because you obeyed me. All God's the nations family. of the earth will. Go. Well, can I, can I finish? Because whenever we look, so I love whenever you said we must compare scripture with scripture, right? Because what does John say in Revelation? He, he sees a multitude in Revelation 7. And what does he say? People from every tribe, tongue, and nation are standing there with palm branches, uh, are praising God. And so that's exactly what I see here. Because you have obeyed me all the nations. Of, it doesn't say all the people of the earth. It says all of the nations, representatives from every tribe, tongue, and nation will be blessed by God. That's a promise from God himself. All right, man. Look, it, this is, you've, we've got we, we've got to keep going, man, because these yeah, are the scriptures. All right, we've said sure. that one. Take that, take that at face value. Okay, so okay. Psalm 65, 2. Read that if you could, brother. Yeah, give me just a sec. I'm starting from the beginning. You know what I mean? I'm, work, I'm working my way through it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I think that's how we got to do it. You know, all right. Praise await you. Yes. Oh God in Zion vows yeah, made exactly. to you are fulfilled. You hear prayers. All people approach you. Our record of sins overwhelms me, but you forgive our acts of rebellion. How blessed is the one whom you choose and allow to live in your palace courts. May we be satisfied with the good things of your house, your holy place. You want me to keep going or. Yep. Um, okay. Yes, all men, all men approach you. All men come to God. That's that. That literally. They, see, these translations are terrible. That when it says all men approach you, it says all men will come to you. That's really how it's written. Okay, so Psalm Psalm one hundred three, Psalm one hundred three a. I mean, I don't know what 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 um version you're reading. I'm reading from the NET, so the New English Translation, because I, I don't know, know Hebrew. Version. So. Is there a spe is there a a specific version that you would like me to read from? Because I have multiple different Bible versions on. Oh no! Did you go away? Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw your screen was uh, blank, but yeah, I can still hear you. Uh, I... No, but I was asking because okay, you have a problem okay. with the translation no, that I'm just, reading from. It's, it's... Is there a specific okay, translation that you would like me to read from? Yeah, what, what translation is it? I'm reading from the NET, but I'm asking, oh. is there another translation that you would like me to read from? I've got multiple translations that I can choose from. If there's a specific oh. one you would rather me have up. No, no, there's no specific one, man. It's, it, it's okay. just what it says, bro. Somebody translate. Somebody, like humans tr can translate. You can translate it any way you want to. Um, and that's up to no, I don't else. think that. Okay, I think that's dishonest, but Psalm 140, what? No, it's not, man. It's that's that's how that's how the Bible got translated, bro, through humans. Do you do you think that we don't have the do you think that you don't have the capacity to translate it for yourself? That you have to listen to what other people uh, are saying? Do you have to listen to their translations over yourself when God lives in you? If Can't I don't God know Hebrew, yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, exactly. if I don't it's know not Hebrew about, or man, Greek, man, I need to rely on a translation. Absolutely. At, at Pentecost, brother, they were speaking languages that, that they'd never heard of in their lives. They didn't know how to speak. It, there's a supernatural ability that we have, man, with God in us. So we don't mm -hmm. need to listen to other people's translations. We that we can just translate ourselves, man, to the Spirit of God. You, you must agree that that's possible for you to understand something that you just don't, you shouldn't understand. 
oh yeah, I believe God illumines us every single day. But again, at the same time, if I look at the Hebrew text, I don't believe that I'm going to be able to understand it. That's why I rely on a translation because I don't know Hebrew. That's why I'm learning Greek. So I don't have to rely on a translation. But you had mentioned Psalm 145. Where do you want me to go there? So, okay, 145, 9. The Lord has compassion on all his creation and he has, and, and, and he has, and all he has made will praise him. The Lord is good to all and compassion on all he has made. All your works will give. Are you reading from the Hebrew or? Just what, whatever one you want, man. No, no, I'm asking you because you're quoting stuff as well. What translation are you reading from? Well, this is what it says. I don't know how yours words it, but it says 140, Psalm 145, 9. The Lord has compassion on all his creation and all he has made will praise him. Hold on, I'm looking it up. So this says, God, God is Yahweh to all. His mercies are tender over all his works. Shall praise you, Yahweh, all your works and your saints shall bless you. The glory of your kingdom, they shall speak of your power and talk or and talk of your power. So that's from the, the Hebrew, and it it doesn't read like you read it. So this chasid, I guess, from what this is saying. This is the saints, the pious, is who is proclaiming yeah, the power. That's all of us. That's that's because we're, okay. So if you if you're not reading these scriptures from a universal salvation perspective, I mean, the saints to you means only a few people. The saints to me means all humans. So, I mean, all right. So all these humans are saints now. Okay, I, I just wanted. I just wanted to go through universal salvation from the, be the beginning, but look, because you're going to interpret it um, whatever way you want. So let's get some scriptures um, that that can't really be in interpreted incorrectly. Okay, so First Timothy two three. This is a good and accept. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So we touched on. That? All men yeah, we, tu we'll we touched to on the truth. Jesse, okay. we touched on the right. Jesse. Jesse, can I right. respond? Can I respond? I, I thought you said, I thought you said you, okay, sorry. That's okay. Yes. We touched on this earlier and I made the point that just like, so I believe that this isn't talking about, again, all people without exception. I believe this is talking about all people without distinction because of the very fact yeah. that Paul is not asking his congregation or, or, or Timothy, I guess I should say, he's not asking Timothy to pray for literally every single person in the world. I mean, you don't do that, do you? You don't pray for every single person. That would take forever. I think it'd be impossible, actually. So the question that I have is why wouldn't you interpret the first half of that verse, or I'm sorry, first couple passages, in the same way that you're interpreting this third verse. I don't know how you can interpret it any 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 other way because he goes on to say who gave himself as a ransom for all. But but Je I, I understand that. Time. I understand that, which but means, Jesse, do you pray for everyone's all, going to admit But do you pray for all people without exception? You don't do that, do you? No. What do you mean do I pray, pray for all people? When when Bible says to pray. Look, First Timothy two no, one. I don't pray for all people. Two exactly, exactly my point, my friend. In yeah. First Tim, you quoted First Timothy Man. two three. I'm quoting First Timothy two one, and Paul says, first then of all, I urge that requests, prayers, and intercessions, thanks be offered on behalf of all people. And you just said, no, I don't do that. I don't pray for all people. So if you don't do that and you don't interpret all people in verse one to mean literally everybody, why do you do the same thing in verse three, two verses later? It's inconsistent, bro. 
Man, you 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 can always you can you can always to to say against it, brother. It's it, it reference. I mean, it it says it right there, bro. Who will have all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Like, can you re- who, can, can, who cares what he to start, bro? He's, that's just an intro. What Paul's talking about? That's just an intro. He's just in, introducing the letter. That's just an intro, man. Are you kidding? In verse t- or in chapter two. Okay. Do you have First Timothy two one pulled up? Because if not, I can read it again. Okay, because so we're read, not read, getting anywhere. Read it again. Okay, it's okay. hard for me to pull stuff up. Okay. First of all, this is First Timothy chapter two verse one. First of all, then I urge that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanks be offered on behalf of all people. Do you believe that Paul is saying there he's encouraging Timothy of course I do. to pray for literally of course. everyone? Yes, of course. But how I is that possible? Personally, myself. Of course. Of course, man. Of course he's to pray, pray for, for everyone and it's, it's every single hit. person in the world. How is that possible, Jesse? You just say, hey, oh, you know, Lord, um, God take care of everyone. everyone. Yeah, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Look, and, and look, to, to be honest, man, I, I'm not into religious prayer. Like, God is going to do what he's going to do, man. Our prayers don't mean anything. Like, when, when we, we pray for stuff, it's just, it's just useless to God, bro. It's useless. Like, we think God's going to change his mind. If, if we say, oh, Lord, can you heal this person? Can you do that? The Lord's going to do what he's going to do, man. This whole, so why oh, you, we all need to pray, Just it's just nonsense, bro. So why do you think Jesus tells us to pray? Why, why, is, Paul well, telling, pray- why is Paul telling people to pray here? He requests that prayers and intercessions and thanks be, have for, be offered on behalf of all people. If it's pointless, why is this verse even in the Bible? Because that word pray means to face. It's it's talking about man, it's talking about really the, the so you honestly think that God's going to change his mind by people praying. Do you do you really think do, that, that, that do God I believe that God's a plan that changes on, on what, what humans want to well, are are you talking about determinism? Like, are you a determinist? Yeah, yeah. Everything's set. In, every every okay. everything's planned out for the foundation of the, every house. Okay. But everything's tightly controlled. No matter what we do, we can't we can't change okay. what God's going to do. Okay. So then, whenever Moses in Exodus, whenever God is getting ready to destroy the Israelites, and we see this beautiful picture of Moses as an intercessor, a type and shadow of Jesus Christ himself, right? Stand up and say, God, no, don't do that. And God, what? He relented, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I believe there's some sense I understand what determinism is saying, but at that time, like I'm not an open theist or anything like that. But at the exact same time, yeah. yes, I believe if we request things that God's going to do those things, right? That That's what Jesus says. If you exactly. ask anything Man. in my name, I will do it, right? <laughs> We're not yeah. just robots. Yeah, but <laughs> it's, 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 it's God determining what he's going to do through Moses. Moses isn't separate from God. God created him. Everything. I agree. God created everything that Moses does. He's he set up his life. It's God talking to himself, man. Jesus prays to the Father. He's talking to himself. It's God talking through us. I'm just saying that you, we don't pray from a separate set. We're praying to – it's God praying to himself, just like Jesus prayed to God through himself. Basically, state it's more of a prophecy than a prayer. It's coming face-to-face with yourself, with, with who is God. You know? You know what I mean? It's man, it's hard to explain, but I like what, that you did mention that because yes, when we speak to God, that's what's going to happen. When we speak to God, we know what's going to happen. If you're in line with His will, everything that's in line with will, right. uh, everything you speak to God, if it's in line, 
God's will, like Moses was in line, it will happen. And that's also a mood to what's going to happen at the end when we ask God to allow the uh, Satan and his angels to be forgiven as well. Where do you see that so, in Scripture? Do, is that just something it, that... More so, do what now? I, I see it with Scripture, man, but the thing is like... Where does Scripture I, say we're going to forgive Satan? I, I mean, I know it says that we're going to judge angels, we, we but I haven't seen where it says it? it's going to. We're going to forgive Satan, bro. You are both God and Satan. That's what humans are. They're part part Satan, part dark, part light. There's uh, we're both. We're both. Everything gets redeemed within us. It, it, I, I don't know how to explain it, man. If, if, if that's not what you believe, that's with a cool, man. with a that's scriptural cool. passage, like, that would be a good start. Like, all right, but can we move on? Sure, sure, can sure. I want, I, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Where, where do let's, we go next? Let's move on. I've said what I've said. You said what you've said. Whoever's watching this is going to make their own decision, and I mean that's that's the way that's the way every, everyone kind of works in their spiritual life. I just want to talk about a few more scriptures, bro. Just a couple more. Sure. We're getting we're getting getting on here. Um, all right, so the. The gospel is of good tidings, of great joy to all people. Luke 2.10. Luke 2.10. I pulled up. <clears throat> all right. Now there were shepherds nearby living out in the fields, keeping guard over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone... Oh, I okay. I know where you're going. Uh, the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in uh, strips of cloth Lying in a manger, suddenly a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among people with whom he is pleased. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me guess, your translation says yeah, that peace on earth with one scripture, all. Are they? Hmm? Yeah, and there's hundreds of those all scriptures. All, 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 all. All, all. Jesus Christ is the restoration of all things. Acts 3, 21. God appointed Jesus, heir of all things, for whom he made the universe. Hebrews 1, 2. No one can come to Christ unless the Father uh, sends him. John 44. Will draw all mankind unto myself. John 12, 32. Jesus Christ is authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as to as many as God has. John 17, 2. The Father has given all things to Jesus' hands. 13, uh, John 13, 3. It's just, it's it never ending. These scriptures never end. That's Is there any the one of those particular scriptures that you would like me to respond to? Well, we can pick any of them. Okay, what about this one? 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. And I understand that if you come at this text, with the assumption that all are in Christ, I understand how you would come away with that reading. But if you come to Thank the, you, the text, no, yeah, no, but here's the problem, Jesse, know, we're united. Through, here's the problem. Like, we're united so, to Christ through faith. And so at that point, no, not everyone is in Christ. And so all who are in Adam, absolutely. They die. Adam is our federal head. Christ is federal head over what does John 1 12 say again those who receive him now I know I understand that you believe that all people are going to receive him one day I just haven't seen that from you tonight and I don't okay, mean any disrespect well, by that I just I just haven't seen I it I expect you to say it from tonight because all day every day I speak to people that don't believe this and no one cares. It doesn't matter how, how, how well you prove it. I've proved it. I prove it every day, all day. And the people who believe, believe. And the people who don't, don't. And there's nothing that you guys can say to us that's going to change us. There's nothing we can say that's going to change you. Only God can do that. 
Only God illuminates right. our hearts and minds. So that's, right. that's why I'm not worried about preaching the gospel, doing any of this for its works, because God does it. It's not up to us. To be honest, I just try to enjoy my life and the peace uh, that and the peace and joy that God's given me. But if people want to talk about this, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I've been studying the Bible my whole life, so can I can't talk about it, I guess. No, I mean, I, I think that yeah. that's wonderful that you've studied the Bible your entire life. I wish that I could have gotten, you know, an early start. But like I said, I was an atheist for the majority of my life. I think I've been a Christian now for about five years, five, six years, uh, something like that. Yeah. But no, I and, and I hear what you're saying. I really do. And, you know, I, I, I think that you know, at the end of the day, right? People are going to listen to this and they are going to decide. I, I think you're right. There's nothing that we can say to each other whenever it comes to these scriptural passages because we've got our minds made up, right? And so the reason that I'm doing this, I'm trying to understand. I mean, I don't know. I guess that's unfair to say because I don't have my mind made up. Again, I could be wrong about anything. I really could. And, but whenever I look at these passages that you're bringing, and I see, and don't get me wrong, even though I disagree with it, I see where you're coming from. I think that's a win in and of itself. You know, it's good to be able to understand where someone is coming from, even if you disagree with them in the end. Yeah, for sure. I'll just, I would completely agree, brother. Uh, so, be beautifully said. Yeah. Hmm. But, yeah. well, but, um, let's, uh, is there I, any more verses yeah. that you wanted to touch on or you want to? You think we should wind down? I mean, I mean, there is. But if anyone's watching this, you can you can add me on Facebook, um, Jesse Bloomer. Um, you'll be able to find me. Um, just go on Tyler's page. I'm I'm there. But I think in the comments or he referenced me in a post not long, so you can add me, um, and we can talk about it some more if you want to message me. That's cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I wanted to have a quick chat, man, and it was really good talking to you. And and you yeah, do seem like a likewise. nice guy. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, I, I wish you all the best, brother. And um, you know, I hope things are going well for you, and I hope they, they continue to prosper as your soul prospers. I appreciate that, Jesse. I really do. And, and same, everything that you just said to me, I, I I wish the same for you. I pray, you know, for you that that God would bless you absolutely wholeheartedly. And and that's the thing that I try to. And, and David, uh, let me speak for my co-host for a little bit. We really we really take pride in what we're doing with this podcast. You know, I want to be charitable. I want to be Christ-like man to everyone that comes on here and, and, and give them a platform to, you know, to say what they need to say, because here's the thing we're all like, and, and I agree with you a hundred percent on this, Jesse, that we are all in the same boat together, right? We're all humans in this chaotic world that God is redeeming. I agree with that. And, you know, we have to, I think Christians, especially in these times, really, really need each other. God didn't put us, you know, to do this solo. God put us with other Christians, brothers and sisters in the faith to engage with, to encourage, and all of these different things. And I just, I love that aspect. So I've I've enjoyed this conversation, you know, I, I, and, and I really, really appreciate you coming on to discuss this, uh, your view. Cause I know you're passionate about it, man. I, I see that and, and I'm jealous of it a little bit. I wish I was that passionate about some things, but, uh, but no, Jesse, I, I, I've enjoyed this conversation and I appreciate you coming on the show. I really do, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Tyler. And the fact that you're willing to do this really shows something about your character and um yeah yeah so by the grace of god man that is only by the grace of god but all right brother we will so we'll wind down we'll go ahead and and, and call this one again jesse Blumer, you find him on facebook um i know you said you mentioned to me a while ago that you had a rumble do you want to plug that a little bit no that's fine bro that's fine i, I okay. post my rumble it's just music, so i post those on my facebook anyway so yeah okay Right on, man. Well, we yep. will see you all next time. If you guys liked it, please make sure to subscribe for more Faith Unaltered content. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and we will see you next time on Faith Unaltered. I've been your host, Tyler Fowler, with me, Jesse Bloomer, and we will see you next time. God bless, good night, and stay like Christ.